Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and in my previous video, which is going to post on Monday, this one's going to post on Tuesday, I said this was the time of month where I, where one of, th where three things occur. First thing is, like I said, is that I make a video that has nothing to do with books, but does have to do with horror. And then I have one that I make that has nothing to do with books or horror or even movies, horror movies. And then the third thing is, is that um, you guys look at it and say, this is not what I signed up for, and you unsubscribe. And that's okay. If you do, that's fine. If you think this is not what you signed up for, this is something I do once a month. It is a little side project, a little pet project that I do. The same thing with my horror movie collection videos. Anyway, this is the video where I take an artist or a band and I rank their studio albums from worst to best. And that is in my opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. If you're a fan of this artist and you have his albums, you've listened to him, you know his music and stuff, I would love to see your ranking down below. Even if you just do your favorite songs by him. Okay? So, that being said, the artist we're going to be talking about today is none other, excuse me, da -da -da -da, none other than Billy Joel. All right. Now he has done 12 studio albums. Uh, one of these that I'm not going to include on here, it would actually be 13 if you want to think about it, is the one he did that was all classical music. And the reason I'm not including that one is because A, he did, he wrote it, he wrote the music, but he does not play on the album. Somebody else plays the music. All right. So to me, technically, uh, that's only half a Billy Joel album, and I'm not including that, okay? So that being said, let's go ahead and get underway. So from worst to best, the first one we've got... Uh, now, a lot of people think that his album Piano Man was actually his first album. It was not. He did one called Cold Spring Harbor. That is this one right here, before he did Piano Man. And what happened was something went wrong with the recording... And it sped up the recording process, and it made him sound like a chipmunk. And then, of course, they remastered it. And a few of the songs became famous, because I think he did a couple of them off of, uh, on his live uh, Songs from the Attic uh, CD. Anyway, uh, this to me is his worst. I mean, you can see little traces of the Billy Joel that you're going to come to know over the years, over the next 12 albums. But it's really a, such a bad effort. I mean, I thought the production, even when they did fix it, was terrible. Uh, I just, and some of the songs are just so maudlin and so melodramatic. It's just like, oh gosh. Anyway, let's get the track listings here. We got She's Got Away, which was a hit after they redid it, remastered it or whatever. Uh, you Can Make Me Free. Everybody Loves You Now, which is another one that was kind of a hit. Why Judy Why? Falling of the Rain, Turn Around, You Look So Good to Me, Tomorrow is Today, Nocturne, which is instrumental, and Got to Begin Again, and that is from 1971, Cold Spring Harbor. There's Billy looking all pensive and serious with his porn star mustache. Yeah. All right. Next up, this was his third album from 1974, and this is Street Life Serenader or Street Life Ser Street Life Serenade. Excuse me. All right. Sorry about the glare. All righty. There you go. And the track listings for this one are Street Life Serenader. Los Angelinos, The Great Suburban Showdown, which is a pretty cool song, uh, Root Beer Rag, instrumental, kind of reminds you of Scott Joplin, you know, the entertainer. Uh, well, I know Marvin Hamlish did the entertainer, but Scott Joplin was, you know, piano player, to Root Beer Rag and stuff like that. Uh, Roberta, it's about a prostitute he's in love with. Uh, the Entertainer, which was a semi-hit for him, you know. Uh, Less of the Big Time Spenders, Weekend Song, Souvenir, and finally, the Mexican Connection, which I think is another instrumental, but I'm not—I don't remember. Let me look to see if there's lyrics back here. 
Uh, yeah, it is an instrumental. So yeah, that is Street Life Serenader from 1974. Uh, that is pick number 11. So Cold Spring Hard is number 12. All right, number 10, 1986. And we got the bridge. Okay. You know, aside from Cold Spring Harbor, he really didn't put out any bad albums. Um, some of them, of course, a little better than others, but all of them were entertaining. But I was just not entertained at all by Cold Spring Harbor. Anyway, the bridge is from 1986. There you go. Got Billy on the back here, looking a whole lot less pensive, kind of relaxed. Got his blue jeans on, and his sweatshirt, or whatever that is. Anyway, <clears throat> tracks on this are Running on Ice. This is the Time. That's a good one. Really enjoyed that one. A Matter of Trust, another great one. Uh, Modern Woman, Baby Grand. That was a duet with Ray Charles, which I know had to be a big thing for Billy Joel because he's a huge Ray Charles fan. Uh, big man on Mo big man on Mulberry Street, temptation, code of silence, and getting closer. So that is number ten, I do believe. Nineteen eighty six, the bridge. All right, number nine from nineteen eighty. When this album first came out, man, the critics just tore this album a new one. Completely hated it. But now I think they've kind of rethought their. Uh, process behind it and are a lot more um, forgiving of it, I guess you could say. I loved it when it came out. I don't give a crap what they say. And this is Glass Houses. All right. Let me get a track listing here. What do we got? Uh, okay, unfold there. Oh, good grief. Still not now. All right, first of all, you, got, you may be right, which has that lining which says, I may be crazy. Billy Joel actually spent time in a mental institution for a while. I believe he was self-volunteered uh, to uh, do it back when he was uh, in his in his youth, in his 20s or so. You know, and he's been in and out of rehab for a while now. In fact, Elton John said that he goes to rehab light. You know, anyway. Uh, let's see. Sometimes a fantasy, uh, which could be regarded as a masturbation song. So, there you go. Uh... And can you say masturbation on YouTube? I don't know if you can, so I'm sitting there thinking there's somebody over on YouTube going, he can't say that, block his video. Anyway, uh, don't ask me why. Uh, it's still rock and roll to me. Love that song. All for Lena. I don't want to be alone. Let's uh, see here. Uh, sleeping with the television on. Uh toi, or You Were the One. Close to the borderline and Through the Long Night. All right, I believe that was number nine. All right, number eight. This was Billy's uh, Ode to the 50s. Uh, this is uh, from 1982. This is An Innocent Man. All right. And he does really have a, a good sense of 1950s music on this album. It's actually a pretty damn good album. Uh, it's got Easy Money, uh, An Innocent Man. The Longest Time, This Night, that one's got a really awesome doo-wop uh, 50s beat to it. Yeah, just a really excellent song. Uh, Tell Her About It, Uptown Girl, Careless Talk, Christy Lee, which was an homage to his uh, former wife, Christy Lee Brinkley, or Christy Brinkley. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, Leave a Tender Moment Alone uh, and Keeping the Faith. So yeah, that is An Innocent Man from 1983. 83. Did I say 82 earlier? Uh, let's see, what was that? Uh, da, da, da. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. I believe this would be number 7. This was his second album, and the one that kind of put him on the map, or started putting him on the map with uh, when that was Piano Man, with that really creepy cover. If you turn around, it's got a creepy, you know, it's like, is he like, I'm, I swear he's like on some drugs or something when he, they took that album, this photo cover, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got Traveling Prayer, Piano Man. I mean, if you're a Billy Joel fan, you've heard Piano Man. I guarantee you, he probably has to play that song every damn time he does, 
you know, a concert, you know, Ain't No Crime, You're My Home, The Ballad of Billy the Kid, one of my personal favorites of his, uh, Worst Comes to Worst, Stop in Nevada, If I Only Had the Worst to Tell You, Somewhere Along the Line, and Captain Jack, which is one freaking awesome song. If you've never heard Captain Jack, listen to Captain Jack. It is fantastic, all right? All right, so that's going to be number seven. Number six from 1999, we got Stormfront. All right. Okay, we got That's Not Her Style. We Didn't Start the Fire. The Down Easter Alexa, which was named for his uh, daughter, Alexa Ray Joel. Uh, I Go to Extremes. Shameless, which Garth Brooks fucking ruined. Sorry, I know I shouldn't say fucking, but he did. He fucking ruined it. All right. Uh, Stormfront. Leningrad, which is a beautiful song, absolutely gorgeous song. Uh, State of Grace, When in Rome, and and so it goes. And that is Stormfront. Okay. Number six. This was his final album from 1993. And I don't think he's going to put anything else out. It's been how long? 93, 2003, 2013? It's been over... Well over 20 years. Uh, I believe it's approaching 30. Wait, so, let me see. 93, 2003. 10 years, 2013, 20 years. Um, yeah, it's almost 30 years now. But anyway, this is River of Dreams. All right. Got No Man's Land. The Great Wall of China. Blonde Over Blue. A Minor Variation. Shades of Grey. All About Soul, which was kind of a hit. Lullaby, Good Night, My Angel. The River of Dreams, another hit. 2,000 Years. And finally, and ironically, Famous Last Words. This is the last album he made. The last song he records on this album or puts on this album is Famous Last Words. And as far as him putting out any studio albums, that just may be the case. So, yeah. All right. So what was that? Number six? I may be so far off. I don't know. Let me see here. Uh, five, four, three, two. That must have been number five. Must have been number five. All right. Anyway, uh, next up from 1978. This was the follow-up to The Stranger. I almost put this one above The Stranger. To me, it is just a little bit better, better but I'm going to keep it on the rating, I put it below it. You know, I know that's weird. Anyway, 52nd Street. All right. So, first up, you got Big Shot, Honesty, My Life, Zanzibar, Stiletto, Rosalinda's Eyes, Half a Mile Away, Until the Night, which is absolutely freaking beautiful. You've got, if you've never heard Until the Night, find it on YouTube or whatever, play it. It is absolutely fantastic. All right. And the title track, 52nd Street. Uh, one thing aside here, for some reason or another, I have decided a long time ago to pick on the song Honesty and I take words that are three syllables and uh, replace the word from uh, replace honesty with that word. One of the most famous ones or popular ones or what strange ones I do is uh, sodomy, which is really strange. You're like, sodomy is such a lonely word. Anyway, uh, all right. <laughs> okay, let me see. Number three. This was one, my God, back in 1977. This album was all over the freaking place. So damn popular. I mean, it made him an absolute star, and this is The Stranger. That cover is so awesome. All right. Got Moving Out, Anthony's song. The Stranger, Just the Way You Are. Scenes from an, an Italian restaurant. God, that's an awesome song. Uh, Vienna, Only the Good Die Young. She's Always a Woman. Get it right the first time, and everybody has a dream. Like I said, if you were living in 1977, you could not turn on the radio without hearing this album. You could not turn on the radio without hearing Just the Way You Are. Did I even put that in the thing? Did I say that? I guess I did. Anyway, you, yeah, it was all over the freaking place in 1977. All right, number two. Number two, yes, uh... From 1982, The Nylon Curtain. I mean, this 
I I was really thinking about putting this one at number one, but the one that I put at number one, I like just a slight bit better. But this one could be considered, to me, could be considered Billy Joel's masterpiece as far as music is concerned, all right? Uh, as far as just songwriting and everything else. Anyway, Allentown, Laura, Pressure, Goodnight Saigon. It was a, uh, as a ode to Vietnam, ode to Vietnam veterans. Absolutely brilliant song. If you've never heard Goodnight Saigon, just go to YouTube and watch the video for it. Uh, She's Right on Time, A Room of Our Own, Surprises, Scandinavian Skies, and finally, Where's the Orchestra? All right. I'm not doing a drum roll, because I don't know how to do a drum roll. You know, it sounds weird, da 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 whatever. Anyway, from 1976, this is the one that came out right before The Stranger, and the stuff before The Stranger, it did not sell very well. That does not mean they were bad albums. That is not the case, okay? This one here, to me, is his best album. And I'm talking about, and I got, I'm got i holding up the, uh, the CD. Let me hold up the album, Turnstiles. Uh, I don't think there's a weak song on this album. I think it is just a fantastic album from start to finish. And I personally, I think it's his his best album. All right, like I said, my opinion. If you got an opinion, I'd love to hear it. Really. Anyway, what do we got on here? We got "Say Goodbye to Hollywood," "Summer Highland Falls," "All You Want to Do Is Dance," "New York State of Mind," which is pretty much a standard. I mean, you can take the songs of like Sinatra. You can take the songs of like. Uh, I don't know. Just name somebody. This song is as much a standard and about New York as New York, New York, or any any other song of about it. All right. This it is just an absolutely fan damn tastic song. To me, I believe it is Billy Joel's absolute best song. All right. Just fantastic. All right. Anyway, James, uh, Prelude, Angry Young Man. I've loved these days, and finally, Miami, 2017, I've seen the lights go out on Broadway. Anyway, that is my pick for his best album. That is Billy Joel, Turnstiles. All right, and that's going to do it, and I'm not really sure who I'm going to do next. Uh, it's a toss-up. Now, author uh, Robert Atone wrote me on Instagram, said he would love to see me do one for the rock band The Kinks. Uh... I don't have all of their studio albums, but I am in the process of uh, trying to grab a few of them as cheaply as I can, and hopefully I've been able to find all the ones that are studio albums. They did a lot of EPs also. I'm not counting those. I'm just counting the ones that are studio albums, okay? Uh, I'm also thinking about doing one for Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, and also doing one for Neil Young. The one for Neil Young is going to be huge. He has got so damn many albums out, it's ridiculous. Anyway, if you like these videos, these music videos, and just let me know. You know, and if you don't, okay. You know, it's something I do once a month, all right? So there you go. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is going to post on Tuesday of next week, I believe on the 19th. So until then, be safe out there, and good night.